Hello everyone and welcome to the RuneScape Developer Q&A. I am Mod Shawnee, being joined by Mod Kelpie, Mod Connor and Mod Osborne. How are you guys doing? Good. Sleepy. <laughs> I can understand the whole sleepy. We can get into that in just a little bit because obviously a little thing happened over the weekend called RuneFest. Um, I mean, let's just go straight into it. First of all, how did you guys find RuneFest and what was your most favourite moment from it? Knackering. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm still absolutely shattered from it. I feel really bad for all the people who hugged me and there was this kind of damp, tired man <laughs> just leaning over them. So I have a bit of that. Yeah, we definitely, we may have made a poor choice with the t-shirts and the big sheet of plastic on front of everyone's chests. Uh, made a poor choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the shirts were great. basically made of plastic when they yeah. were wearing anoraks. And I was wearing... It was like uh, some people had the sweat circle. Oh, oh, sweat. oh that was <laughs> so bad. <laughs> we're just so attractive. And Luckily. I was wearing a Hawaiian shirt the entire day. So, yeah, that was, that was my day in a <laughs> nutshell, really. She always wear Hawaiian shirts. And obviously getting bullied. So, um, before we get into a little, uh, couple of things, we've got Double XP coming up this weekend. Uh, kicks off Friday, 12 p.m. game time. Finishes Monday, 12 p.m. game time. We have a page which is up on RuneScape. Uh, dot com that you can check out, um, which will give you all the information from Gam Double XP. But um, that obviously is coming up. Uh, obviously, we're here for the uh, the recap of RuneFest, and obviously, there's a lot to talk about. And uh, we'll kick it straight off. Bank bidders. Um, straight into the mix. Let's just go straight into it. Yeah. Uh, Mod Osborne, you're able to just, first of all, summarize bank bidders in case people hadn't seen the stream or hadn't watched any yeah. recaps and stuff. What the plan of it is, and what are we hoping to achieve from this? Yeah, um, it's a for me. It's well, it's been obviously exciting to a lot of people. Lots of people are talking about it. Some people are really panicked about elements of it, and that might be because I described it poorly. <laughs> I think is probably the right way of saying it. Um, yeah, bank bid is. is um, I'm imagining it's something akin to um, like the raffle that we've done before, September okay. raffle. The idea of um, the best design that I've seen so far, and I've been talking to Mod Wolver about it, is the idea that you go into a room and there'll be seven people there. You can, you know, you'll find out a little bit of information on each of those seven people. And those seven people are each banned accounts. And these accounts are completely anonymous. So they won't look like the original account, they won't have the same name. But we'll give you a little detail about each one. And that might be how long they've been playing, their total levels, that sort of thing. <clears throat> and based on that, um, I, can, I, could pro I could spend like 10,000 GP to, put, to kind of put my, just decide which one of those I think is going to have the best bank. And when we say bank, it's their top, top 25 stacks. We'll choose 25 stacks okay. to be applied to that account. And when it comes around, so each day, we'll kind of reveal what was in that account. And it could be something as bad as a bronze pickaxe, or it could be something as good as, you know, stacks of resources or, or rare or something like that. So um, a lot of people were concerned that um, this would be influxing rares and um, GP into the economy. The, we would, we're always going to have an upfront cost. The, it's going to vastly outweigh, um, considering the number of people who get involved with these events, it's going to vastly outweigh what is coming in. Um, so I am not concerned myself. I mean, obviously there's... Um, the, I, the one there's thing to remember is there's the scale of the economy within RuneScape. And while you might have large stacks on some of these accounts, even injecting all of them directly into the game isn't going to have such a detrimental impact on the economy. And um, One of the things we would be doing in choosing the accounts to go in are like flagging accounts ready to go in is looking at what they have on them to make sure it doesn't have a detrimental impact okay so obviously there's issues such as let's say for example rich players seem to benefit from this in the sense that you've yeah. just explained they have rare items then i'm someone with ten thousand gold then there's no way i can bid on something well it's more like a raffle so say that um if i've got those seven people i can decide which one i want to go for so i can only go for one and i've chosen that one um and then i find out if so first of all, one, one person out of the obviously hundreds of thousands who are going to put their ticket, their 10,000 ticket on that one is, is going to be the winner. But we might have a reward if you pick the one out of the seven that gave you, that had the biggest bank. So there'll, still be, there'll be levels of gaming on this. Okay. Um, I think it's really exciting. They're kind of taking the story towards Story Hunters Phil. Um, it makes the September raffle kind of idea a bit more, you know, ramped up and exciting. It might be that we have some competition where we take 10 players at random or through a competition and do a stream of it later on that day. You know, there's, there's many ways that we could do it. But we, I, I think to say that we have not thought about the resource element, the, um, the rich getting richer element, I think is, is unfair. I think we've very much got that in mind. Okay, so obviously since the, recept the reaction, or the announcement I yeah. should say, there's been quite a shift in prices for items, etc. Okay. Um, can you 
straight up say right now, is every item pretty much up for grabs in this? Or is there certain ones you can't get? For example, there was a pie hat shown in one of the images, I believe. Uh, um, it was a Halloween mask. Uh, apologies, Halloween no, mask. So will stuff like that actually be uh, I, achievable? Personally, um, I would be surprised if we didn't. Yeah, um, I mean that's the part of the excitement of it. Okay, is the prospect of getting them. I don't think I don't think it'll be on every account by any means. Tradables. I think part of the fun. Sorry, would you? Only it's got to be tradable. Tradable. only tradables. Yeah. No untradables. Of course. Um, which, but you were talking about things on GE anyway, so yeah. I, I, I took that. Yeah, apologies. Yeah, but yeah, but, um, yeah I, I think that the excitement comes from that it could be very little or it could be a lot, and I think that there's no point in doing it if there's not the possibility of getting. One of the things to remember with a, a rare item is there are rare items and the there's not like all of the banned accounts have a multitude of those rare items. They're still rare yeah. and extremely rare on those We're accounts. We're still handpicking as well. Yeah, and, and one of the things, I, I mean, I'm sure you're going to mention it later, but um, we've got a survey. Yeah. Um, we've got a survey on all of our announcements, not just bank betters, that um, we made during Greenfest. And i um, love to put it into the chat. Relatively soon. I think we can put now. it in right now, actually. Yeah, it's going in there now. now. And it's a case of just like, what are you excited about and what are you concerned about, about each of the updates that we threw out there. And that's just going to give us an idea of whether or not, you know, I mean, there's still a possibility that we won't do certain things if they come out poorly. But really, we just want to get a kind of a, 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 a temperature gauge. Is there a frequency behind this? Is this going to be something you can just go and do every day or is it going to be a weekly thing? This is something or? I want to make clear that, I mean, just like the raffle, or maybe maybe the drop. I mean, there are a couple of models there. It depends how well it does. Yeah. It might be that we drop it. You just do it like the drop. You know, a few times a year. Okay. It might be that we do it for one month as an event, like as, like the raffle. We'll see. What we want to do is it's make important sure that it's not every single day for the year. Okay. Uh, yeah, it'll be a temporary mm -hmm. thing, regardless of how we do it. We want to make it an event. We want to make it exciting. And we want to make it fun. Uh, that's the big part. We're not doing this for a detrimental impact. We're doing this because we want it to be fun. We think it's really exciting. And the concept of, like, you know, does it have lots of resources? Does it not have lots of resources? Can watching that stream. Can, it's been great. Yeah, spotted something in the way they've been training. You know, they've just got one skill at yeah. like these. So I'm fairly certain they're going to have a certain stack mm -hmm. in their banks. Oh, actually, it was Mule. They didn't have any of the resources themselves. You know, those kinds yeah. of things. Yeah. Try to understand the behavior that generates the account that you're going to be bidding on. And then seeing if you paid off when you got there. It's, and to be fair, we found out today there have been a few news articles about it. You know, it has it obviously has some interest out. You know, to new players perhaps. Do you ever see the accounts being named no. uh, when been this will never. be completely anonymous? Okay, we don't want any manipulation there. There'd be no point in making okay. them. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, is there anything else you guys want to clarify on that before we move on in regards to bank bidders or drink? Uh, I think if we watch the. If we watch the chat, see if anything comes up. We can yeah, we can we it. can just pick stuff up yeah. and we can come back to it later and pick yeah, up some more questions. So throw them in. But we'll jump to the other one, which was the announcement you made at the end of the reveals, um, yeah. which was Slayer moving to a 120 skill. Yeah, this obviously got a lot of chatter as well. I think you're going to whenever you do a little kind of mic drop and leave, uh, as it were. <laughs> um, the uh, one of the things I want to make clear is that um, the Slayer dungeon and 120 are kind of wrapped up in one thing. We're not doing two Slayer updates. Okay. The Slayer dungeon is really how we're taking people towards 120. Um, if it goes really well, then we will be dropping in more mobs over the course of the year through little kind of maybe ninja jobs or something like that, perhaps. But um, yeah, um, one of the things we want to do is um, I've been talking to the design team and I'm really interested in um, finding a way of getting players to 120 without having escalating amounts of GP or escalating amounts of resources in the drop table. So one of the things that I see a lot of people concerned about with 120 is that it's just going to, you know, PVM is going to be even more lucrative than skip. And you wouldn't do X Slayer Monster because it doesn't give you this much gold an hour. Yeah, that sort of thing. I'm really interested in it, whether or not, I mean, it's kind of utopian and maybe we can get it done, but like the idea of it being its own reward space, that's why the Slayer player as Slayer Master is in there. What if the player through these through these creatures was gaining monsters to put in their own Slayer dungeon as their own Slayer Master? You know, then I'm not adding any resources, I'm just taking the existing Slayer Monsters and then building out my own dungeon. Talk to the guys um, who were in charge of that update about that prospect. So um, we're looking at ways that um, 120 can have minimal effect on that, that issue, which is non-combat skilling versus PVM. So... Um, I believe you talked about completion requirements regarding yeah. this. Are you able to elaborate upon them just in case people hadn't seen the stream yet, etc.? What's going to happen 
to Slayer as a skill when it becomes 120 uh, as a completionist requirement? Is there any time frame, in yeah, etc.? It's still relatively up in the air. I think that I'm open for the conversation to be reopened, if you get what I mean, <laughs> about um, whether or not we do comp or trim requirements for this and whether or not they come in immediately or have a three month grace period. I went on stage and said that there was yeah. the end of the expansion is when all capes will be taken off you, as it were. But we've been talking about other models. Yeah, I mean, like, like the, you mentioned the achievements. Uh, there's the achievement system as well yeah. that we're looking at. Um, something that we've been um, discussing is uh, the idea of um, when expansions come around, if we, with the launch of an expansion, we remove um, completion escapes at that point. Okay. Um, and then for the next three months, they I just got dripped. You've got dripped yeah, on. It's been happening. Amazing. Wow, well, we got that in the shot. <laughs> anyway, uh, so. Uh, so, uh, so every, essentially every three months, uh, but there's, there's almost like a season sort of thing. Um, we don't remove anything new added in over that period of time, doesn't remove your cape, but after, with the launch of each expansion, every three months, that's when we remove the capes and you, so that could... anything that's you ha that you haven't completed in the last three months is then a, a, re a requirement to get it back. So that, what statement that makes to compers or trim compers is that every f three months mm -hmm. there you need to have completed everything and right. then we'll take the cape away. Mm -hmm. So you only know that, you know, as a comper or trim comper, so you, you know, only have it removed four times a month. So you'll yeah. know by time the next expansion comes yeah. out. Four times a month, sorry. Four times a month. That's, that's, how, that's, how that's we what we do it now. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's kind of take a uh, oh, Sorry. It's, but yeah, it's no, also worth clarifying for those who, haven't, what, who didn't watch the stream necessarily. Those who are already at 120 virtual levels will be converted over to 120 Slayer. I really feel that that's the way to go. It'd take a lot of convincing for me, for somebody to tell me that it should be otherwise. And also that all combat skills remain at 99. We're not yeah. raising that to 120. Okay, so um, I'm going to take a step back a second here because obviously you guys used the survey which was released at the start, uh, in, at the summer summit, I believe it yeah. was, uh, and then you revealed the results from that. So a lot of there's been a lot of discussion about that. I just want to ask, how did you guys gather the survey responses, and how many people were we looking at that completed it? So the survey was it was pretty successful this year. Um, we had about we had nearly fifty thousand. Yeah, almost double what we had yeah. the year before, which is great. That is superb. So that's similar to what we get usually for an in-game poll. Um, so we, with the survey, we had we had that collected from all of our social networks. Uh, we also did emails out to people who might haven't like haven't played in a while or have started to move slightly away from RuneScape just to see what would get them excited again. And then specifically trying to chase after our our most dedicated players as well and make sure that they had their say. So we reached out to as many places as we could to see how the different uh, different groups of people would respond and different things that they were looking for. Um, and obviously there's, in, in its own, that could be its own stream just from the survey itself. And yeah, I, mean, I think there's a lot of people who'd be interested in seeing all of the results of the, sh uh, of the survey because we only showed the top 12. There were 41 updates there. Yeah. Um, there were also lots of questions in between about um, how many what your t number of uh, people you'd like in a team to fight a boss, how many quests you'd like in a year, what topics there should be in quests. There was so much of PvP, there was so much there that I'd really like to, because it forms a lot of the answers or the, why we chose the updates that we did. Gotcha. So um, just coming back to Slayer to 120 very quickly. Um, so there's a bit of discussion about invention. Obviously, invention was an omission uh, in the sense of RuneFest. Yeah. I mean, what's the deal with invention at the moment? So our goal with invention is um, it's not to do like a batch of content as an update. What we're doing with invention is continuously improving it over time and continuously filling out that space. What we have with it is a massive reward space that we can work with. Slayer and invention together going to 120 is a huge chance yeah. for us to start filling that up with new devices, perks, new items, and that's kind of how we're going to be using it. Yeah, it's allowed us to... Um we can look at what players feel that is needed from invention at any given point. Um, earlier on the, um, this year, it was it was really kind of, I want more non-combat methods of training invention. That's kind of changed now. I mean, we have got um, somebody working on some more, but um, it, it feels like really we want stuff beyond kind of, you know, in the higher levels of invention, for exam example. Uh, 99 to 120 and also the top levels of weapon. Yeah. Oh, sorry, um, of item. As your item levels up, filling out that space makes so sure now we something to, for them. To focus on that. Um, sorry, J JD, are you okay to scroll the chat down so we can, yeah. sorry, because it's frozen, apologies, just want to, there we go, awesome, just wanted to see what everyone was saying so we can keep an eye on that. Um, okay, bosses, earlier on today, Mod Ali 
So I'll, to wait. Um, I'll read it just in case anyone hasn't seen it. Um, after your feedback on the boss announcement, we have decided to remove the solo limitation. We may consider anywhere from one to five players. First of all, why? And two, what's the initial plan to you? Uh, I feel like the solo wasn't really a major requirement for this. We also did the survey before we had released Tell Us. So yeah, I think that, that kind of the space. Yeah, when we were looking at the survey results, it felt like it was skewing things, the fact that we put the survey out before Tell Us. So people had that kind of, they felt, maybe they felt satisfied by Tell Us. And when we were looking at the kind of the number of, the size of groups against bosses, the players told us what they preferred to fight bosses with. Um, solo came out top, but only, you know, kind of like five or six percent above two to three, so smaller teams. Um, so I think that in retrospect, we should have kept that more open. Or, or we, we, I'd like to, to say to Ollie and the guys that, yeah, you can be more open and that it can be a smaller team. Perhaps we go that kind of next route of we aim it for small groups and hey, if you can solo it, well, good on you. You know, you're getting a lot of rewards just for yourself. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, there was a lack of raids too, of course. Um, yeah. Is there anything to mention regarding that? Or I suppose the biggest thing with raids is, and this comes out with the survey and looking further into the details, it really doesn't survey well. Uh, okay. The number of people who play raids daily is very small. And maybe we could grow that with another raids, but the people who are interested in us building one is also quite small. The big thing is they're very dedicated. Yeah. Yeah. And you see that. Like Anybody who put it anywhere really wants raids. And what we want to try and do is, if we if we start expanding that solo boss to a group boss, we can we can alleviate some of that yeah. that need. But it's something we we can watch. For, for me, um, it okay. We're not doing raids next year, but it's important for me that we still don't marginalise those passionate smaller groups. So um, this filters into clans, which I'm sure you're going to talk about. Um, but we want to make sure that. Um, we do still satisfy those players later on. So while, okay, we've, it's been a year and a half since the first raids, or a year and a bit since the first raids, that we can still satisfy larger teams maybe at some point in the future. So you mentioned clans very briefly. Yeah. Uh, um, He's jumping on clans. Yeah, so clans came 34th out of 41. Okay. I just had a quick look at the survey before we came in. So from, a pure, from purely the angle of we should give people what they want, which isn't, which isn't solely how we determine a year by any means. Of course. And that's actually very low. Um, you could also have a look at, some players, when I was talking to at Reamfest, were saying, well, it was unfair to put it up against a solo boss or a Slayer dungeon or a, an Elder God's quest. But in terms of proportion of work, amount of work, it may even be larger than those. So unfortunately, we had to put it in with those because of the kind of the parity of effort in terms of resource. But regardless, I, I think now we've determined that we're not going to do a large scale clan update next year. I think that's, that's helpful in that we now know that we should be doing smaller stuff. What can we do that just kind of helps out clans? It it clears that space. So you quite often have a conversation about whether you want to, like, we should do we should do this small fix for clans. Oh, well, we'll do this big clan update and we'll bundle it in with all of that. And that keeps happening. And when that bigger update keeps getting pushed out bit by bit, you end up with this group who don't get anything yeah. sent through to them. Okay. And you'll never see, like, clans, clans are great and having people involved in them is wonderful. And they do great things for the game, like building those social networks. Yeah. But updating them is very difficult and the people who actually feel like they get something back from that update is actually quite small. Yeah. And that's that's unfortunate, but we can try and do other things. So Kelpie's jumped in as he always does to save the day. Yeah, no, I, I, no, <laughs> no, volunteered I'm, himself to do all of the work on his own. Ninja yeah. have released some cool little yeah. clan additions. I mean, towards the start of the year, I remember seeing quite a couple of little uh, little fixes that come in from Ninja. Yeah. For example, orts being uh, a virtual storage instead of an actual currency yeah. carrier yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, like I was speaking to some players at RuneFest about it. Um, I've taken some of the suggestions, and we, we had our Ninja backlog meeting today, and we put a few as uh, yeah, we'll take a look at yeah, um, and we'll look at more stuff. Um, throughout the year. So Ninja feel a little bit freer in that they're not waiting for that big update to come and it's something they can start looking at. Looking yeah, I mean, months. it's obviously you, we're going to be doing bank rework as a major project, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which does limit um, what, what we're able to do um, over the next Yeah, so we're not talking new skill plots. Um, we're not talking about wholesale avatar changes. We're mm -hmm. talking like um, XP perhaps bonuses for higher levels to keep it in parity with Elf City, that sort of thing. Quality of life improvements yeah, is the goal. Yeah, quality of life. Well, I guess we are now. 
Do you know when you, you say these things and you're I on a stream? I have an example. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to just... never let you on stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll take a bit of a sidestep, because obviously you guys announced a couple quests coming. Um, yeah. I hope we have the image for this, the Evil Dave one, which I absolutely love, uh, the image for it. I think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, where it's a tree. Yeah, uh, these guys uh, imitated <laughs> it uh, with a, a very awesome tweet from Mod Salem, actually, I believe it was, who did it. Um, but... So you announced Evil Dave, uh, the quest, I believe the Elder God quest as well. Yeah. Um, is that it for quests in 2017? No, yeah, I mean, or... obviously you saw Quandest as well. Yeah, it's yeah, actually, yeah, um, yeah. we've also got uh, another quest that people are working on this tap time. Oh, I love that image so much. Look at his grumpy cat face. Oh, <laughs> so good. So I really good. want to put the Judge Dread helmet on Zamorak. <laughs> I think it would fit perfectly. <laughs> and obviously the hover hand needs to be on Evil Day. Uh, but, I mean, it's great. I love it. The, um, so there is another quest that he's been working on in TAP. We'll see how that goes. I don't want to commit to it going into a schedule, because obviously that's what TAP is. We, we need to make sure there's a quality bar. But um, I want to make it clear what expansions means for quests. Now, quests, um, for a long period of time now, have had to hold their own against things like solo bosses, God Wars Dungeon 2, that sort of thing. So the, the expense of producing a quest has escalated and escalated to such a degree. With expansions, what I want to be able to do is tell a diversity of stories. Um, I would really like that, that expectation or onus on a, on a quest to be as big as, or as huge as one of these updates that come down a bit. I don't think that needs to be there. I think that the story players and our quest players are actually more interested in a wide range of topics, character-oriented quests. So, for example, with Menaphos, you've got Krondis. Maybe you have a Hecht quest. Maybe those are our main large-ish storylines, but you've also got small things that kind of get you finding out about the tunes or finding out about the culture. Um, smaller story elements that, um, you know, have, are similar to some of the older quests that we used to put out in like 2006. I don't see a reason why we can't. And the reason we haven't done that in the past, um, or sorry, in the past two years, is just the expectation that's added to a quest. Like everything has to be Fate of the Gods level. A lot of that's come from us, a lot of that's come from the players. But I expect expansions to be a kind of a, you know, a plethora of storyline, and that's, I think that's really exciting. The quests and everything in an area mean that, that we're, we bring those areas to life a bit more than we would otherwise. Yeah. So as you wander around, you might bump into another quest. So you might discover something new that you want to try and investigate. And I think that's how we'll start seeing major quests coming out with the release. And also as you start discover or as you start exploring, you discover other quests yeah. as you move through the area. Please remember that's just an example. There may not be a hex <laughs> quest. I need to caveat apparently. Um, <laughs> oh, caveats. <laughs> so, I mean, before we go into Menifers, and we'll talk a bit more about expansions and what expansions means for RuneScape sure. as well, because obviously that's kind of a big deal. Um, just to clarify, when you mentioned like the biggest announcements, um, that I remember you mentioning about like, making the biggest announcement ever. I consider that Would to be the expansions be that yeah, one. Yeah, I can't recall a RuneFest announcement that was as big as we are changing every, you know, the teams, how we work, how we deliver content, what we're delivering. Um, yeah, that feels big to me. Um, we'll jump. We'll jump in in a second because I think we have uh, the trailer ready for the Menaphos, uh, the Menaphos reveal trailer, which is awesome. Yes, that and I think stars. we should play it on stream just to show it off. So uh, we'll get that up in just a second for you guys to check My out. My world has taken me to wondrous places. I have peeked to the pockets of the elves. I have claimed an island in the eastern lands and in the heart of Gilinor. I have stolen the legendary god sword, but one mark has eluded me. If you ask me, it is one of life's great tragedies. All there right. we go. Yeah. I love it, I love it. I like that a lot of people who are like, oh, Ozan could kill Telos. It's like, no, you're missing the point. Ozan always lies about his stories. I can only... <laughs> so I, I just anticipate that. All of those are lies by Ozan. Gotcha. So, I mean, before we dive into, dive into Menifers, I mean, let's get into expansion. So, specifically, from the RuneScape update schedule, we right now have the weekly updates, weekly updates, weekly updates, builds up to the big monthly update. Is that correct? Yeah, that's yeah. been pretty much this year. Um, so why the change to expansions? What are we hoping to get out of it? And what does this mean for players? And what, uh, what are they waiting for? Well, uh, one of the... uh, That's a lot mixed up there. Yeah, yeah that's a lot. So, so I'm going to go for why, why expansions, why now? Sure. Kind of. Um, one of the things that I felt was really missing from... Um, content maybe over the past like four or five years is that feeling of discovery and exploration 
that's a big part for me, um, is that notion that you can be at the city walls, you can know a certain amount about the content, but you're going in and you're talking to everybody. You're examining everything. You know, we've had a lot of conversations and, and Reddit threads about examines. And the notion of, I only know so much that's there and I'm progressing through this city um, is really good for me. And, and also, I think that the... Obviously, there was a lot of conversation about um, dead content, batching, um, treating the players as beta testers, which are, we mentioned a lot at the start of expansions, uh, the expansion talk that we did at RuneFest. I think that um, players really enjoyed Elf City, and that was a feeling that I really want to keep going. Um, that notion that um, you've got this big batch of stuff, you're investigating every nook and cranny, and there's just so much stuff to keep you going for a whole period, you know, two months, three months. In fact, to be honest, years. Uh, Kelpie and the Gobi, don't worry. <laughs> um, Sorry, I probably didn't get the best answer because I had peripheral Gobi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, I believe it's every three months starting June 2017. Yes. Um, is, this, is this dead set, we're going to just keep do this from now on? Or is the expansion a year test? Is this literally the I don't, plan I don't it? like calling it a test. Uh, yeah, in but that sense. The, we believe this is healthy for RuneScape. Sure. We're looking at, I think the big thing was the dead content batches, uh, feeling of something being unfinished. What we want to do is bring everything together, deliver it in the one day, and make it really exciting. But also make something that's big enough that it warrants continuous attention. The the uh, constant return to like Elf City as a as a place and a major change to the world. Like out of all of the updates we've done in the past couple of years, it's the one that everybody talks about and everybody focuses on, and we keep coming back to it. So yeah. we have the capability to do that more often than once every like several years, and we're going to try and do it three times next year. Okay. If one of them manages to stay as sticky as Elf City, and I think Manifest is the one that can do it, I would be delighted. If two of them do it, I'd be ecstatic. I'd love if all three mm. of them did it. I mean, if we're getting into the nitty gritty of like, you know, obviously we don't show you the membership numbers and things like that. Um, but in getting into the nitty, -gr nitty gritty of it, players are looking for a reason for why they should subscribe. And this gives them this really big, compelling reason to do it. It's that real kind of step up and said, if I'm, if I'm thinking about subscribing, now's the time to do it because of Menaphos. Okay, um, so Menaphos, it's oh, actually, before I go into Menaphos, just one more thing. Um, what does this mean in regards to ninja updates, etc., in the lead up to expansions? Um, it's kind of just like business as usual for us, really. Um, yeah, I mean, we were still looking to do ninja fixes. Um, I've kind of talked about, I think, in the last stream, maybe about, you know, I kind of what I feel like Ninja should be working on is everything we do kind of feels impactful. So I guess um, a good example is this week's release in terms of Ninja fixes. The cache. You, there's a bunch of divination cache changes. And I know there's some issues and we are sorting those. It's done. We might, we might, yeah, it's done. we've done it all good. today. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's what you focus on and you, and, and it's, you know, I think that it feels impactful and sometimes we spend a lot of time on really minor little things that only change one or two things for, you know, for a few people and and I think sometimes people get a little bit caught up on the quantity over the quality of the of, um, fixes and they just look at the patch notes and well, there's a wall of text there but that doesn't mean like what's actually there is particularly significant, you know. Um, so, you know, I think we, we're in we're in that kind of point where we've done a lot of small stuff and there will be still small stuff to do, um, but we're moving, we're focusing a little bit more on more larger stuff, um, kind of like mini project type stuff to go to areas and rework them. And, um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, I get one chance to talk in this whole entire stream. Thanks. Come on, what are you doing I your ninja even, fixes? I can't remember what I was talking you, about. You were saying you're doing little mini projects and it yeah. was fun. So you said you were doing the Elder Gods quest. Oh yeah, Elder Gods quest, um, yeah. bank rework, um, climate Everything. work. Yeah. <laughs> um, you right. got on streaming. On that, um, on that pillow action there. Um, pillow action? Anyway, I'm moving on from that <laughs> immediately. Um, Menaphos. <laughs> Menaphos. Menaphos. Have we, have we talked about this? Uh, yeah. So, summarise... 
obviously very difficult because Men of Us is going to be this giant epic project, right? Yeah. Men of Us, what, you, what is going to be happening there? Because obviously we've got Crondis, you've talked about Crondis. I believe you said in the news post that went out, um, we had the, uh, you kind of envisioned it as a citywide pyramid thunder. Yeah. I mean, what's the plan here? But my, the way I imagine it and the way I hope it will be is that this is basically an end game to non-combat skilling. It's something for people to really test their abilities at gathering, strategizing, their knowledge of the game when it comes to doing non-combat skilling. And so just kind of jumping into these tombs whereby they'll have an objective. Um, if they satisfy that objective, you get the best, some of the best XP and resources in the game. If you don't satisfy it, well, you, you don't get that. Um, and it will just, like some of the stuff that happens with um, bossing, that intricacy, that strategy, um, bringing that to non-combat skilling. For those who are willing to put in the effort um, to really get the best, you know, efficiency, to, in efficiency terms, the best non-combat rates. Are you able to explain a little bit about the quest with uh, Krondis? Obviously, yeah. a bit corrupted, as you mentioned in your talk. There are, there are a few people who are kind of like, oh, what about Het? Because Het is the, um, uh, the human demigod that um, is also in the desert. We've just gone for Krondis for the moment to announce because Krondis looks really good in some concept art. <laughs> but yeah, a rather large um, uh, demigod has been corrupted by Amaskit, who is devouring everything, basically water, food, people maybe. Um, and your job is to remove that corruption, just like Do No Evil, um, you did in that with Atmakin. Um, it looks great. The um, Mod Roly is really excited about getting onto that. He's, um, uh, he's the desert curator now, um, and he's done some fantastic quests with the Vampire series, and obviously did the Ozan quests. Um, so, yeah, we've got a good prospect there. So, um, there's also a Slayer Dungeon with that. I believe we kind of alluded yeah, to it. Yeah, Slayer Dungeon on 120 and 1 kind of thing. The, the idea. Perhaps, I mean, we're still early days that they could become a Slayer Master with this. Maybe, maybe their own dungeon. Um, obviously, we've got issues with the design of that. The Slayer is always meant to be competitive and social. What happens when you create your own dungeon? But we've got so many different ideas for that. We've got, we're really quite excited by it. And obviously, people want to know um, <laughs> more expansions, but I imagine there isn't really <laughs> much we want to say just yet in that But that's sense. one of the things with expansions, we would want to bring that back that sense of discovery. So at the moment, we'll talk about Menifos, and we'll talk about parts, and yeah. we, have, we have named three parts that will be in it. There are other things that we're going to try and deliver at the same time. And so it'll be something new and surprising when you hear about it. And when we talk about the next expansion, we'll similarly, we'll have a trailer, we'll have a, a teaser to start with. Oh, you just committed this. We will do that. We will do it. <laughs> but uh, it's quite hard because a lot of players are saying, what about this? What about that? Why aren't you putting that update in there? It may well be one of the updates that comes with the expansion. So, of course, we're having to be quite coy. Mm -hmm. All right. So, reworks came up. And then turn to you for this one, Kelpie, because the, uh, the bank rework is mm -hmm. like the, the big one, so to speak. I think we have a couple of images. Of, hello. I think we have a couple of images um, to bring up on camera um, for that in just a moment. But... Um, it looks and sounds really awesome, like unlimited bank tabs, and obviously the design of it's kind not of changed. Quite unlimited. Not quite unlimited. Not quite unlimited. Ah, well, it's, it's a fair bit, but I mean, dev has dev work already started on this. Uh, so we're kind of in the process of kind of starting, really. Um, it's going to be a joint project between, well, in, in terms of the kind of development side, um, Multiply and Mod uh, Hunter. No. Yep, yep, yep. Mod yes. Hunter. Yep. Yes. Constantly, <laughs> like, can't remember. Mod names are terrible, aren't they? Um, <laughs> so hard to remember. Uh, yes. Uh, Mod Pie is still working on uh, uh, Bounty Hunter at the moment, but Mod Hunter has kind of started. Um, this, we're still kind of, like, just finalising the design um, from with Mod Timbo. Um, but yes, we're moving on to that. Uh, it is the... It was it came top in the survey. Came top, came yeah. top in the survey. Placeholders Whenever I do my own kind of like ninja surveys on like Reddit and the forums, um, bank placeholders as well as n numerous other bank stuff. Bank placeholders, all, bank, uh, bank placeholders always comes top. There's countless other kind of bank type features that people request as well. Um, so it's going to take a long time, but we're going to do it because you know at the end of the day, um, pretty much every time you log into the game, you're likely to interact with your bank. Um, so, making it improve the usability um, with that will uh, hopefully improve everyone's kind of quality of life with uh, just playing the game. So, um, in previous streams, you have mentioned that uh, uh, you'd like to do a beta for this because it's it, obviously it will a be. very we will definitely project. do a beta for it um, because obviously, you know, if it, there are problems, then it will ruin everyone's banks, and you know, there's a lot more people players in the game than there are QA testers. Uh, and 
And yeah, so it will it will be like we will get it to the point where we think we're we're happy with it. Then we'll put it into beta. We'll only do it for like a period of a week or so. Um, check that it seems to be working fine. If it's not, close the beta. Work on it some more. Go back to beta. Uh, if everything works fine, then uh, then we'll release it. So does this kind of set the benchmark for future releases from us that are kind of on a grand scale like this? So we uh, we want to be a test this obviously for, bit, for obvious reasons because we don't want people's banks it, to fall yeah, over. Yeah, it depends on the type of project. Um, when it's like a quest, you know you can set yourself a period of time and, and go, right, I'm going to do a quest. I've got two months to do it. I'm going to you work on it. I know that I basically got a month and a half to maybe work on it and then I need to give some QA and all the other bits sometime at the end. Mm -hmm. and, and you know you can design for one and a half months of work essentially. Um, when you're doing something like uh, a bank rework or something that's quite technical, stuff that uses engine um, where you the potential to break something in the game is very high um, and and if you do break it, like the damage it does is massive, then you know, you've essentially got to give it all the time it needs to ensure that um, you know, everything goes fine, really. Yeah, of course. Um, Clue Scrolls, of course, was mm -hmm. mentioned uh, during the, uh, the talks as well. I mean, what are we expecting to see from this when, uh, when it comes into the game? Um, so this is likely a Ninja Project as well. Um, uh, so uh, I think um, we want to we want to kind of refresh what's there. Um, I don't particularly like how basically playing uh, going through elite scrolls is a not is a, a lot nicer experience than going through like medium and hard. Um, so I think we need to kind of rework that a bit. We need to rebalance some stuff. Um, we need to add in new rewards. Um, on top of that, we then we have some other ideas for clue scrolls that we would like to do. I'm not sure if we announced any of that stuff. Did you talk about any of that? I talked about it far too much, obviously. <laughs> Unique clue scrolls, yeah, uh, footprints, yeah. Things like that. Unique clue scrolls are the things that I think are massive. Yeah. Okay. I really so like can that. you explain? Just... I, I'm worried because it's yet another of my ideas, and this is like you know, bank bidders, <laughs> etc. You know, but um... no, no it, it it'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> The idea of there being a clue scroll that only one person can complete and then there is only one reward for it, but everybody gets it in their inventory at the same time. And the idea that it will be multi-staged, therefore you can do high scores for it. So I might be at stage three, I look on the high scores and everybody else is at stage two. You know, like the closest people, and I'm really excited about this, you know, just got to work out the next few stages and the item is mine. Um, and maybe even we kind of, you know, we'll have you on live stream following it and telling everybody, uh, everybody's at level, you know, the highest is at level seven. <laughs> Um, yeah, and doing that like once every month or once every few months. Yeah, I think in, I think I um, visual you um, visualize it like slightly differently. Sure. Um, I, I kind of feel like we would maybe go for something where it would be like you you still you like a clue scroll. There's stages thing. They're obviously all set, um, and yeah. yeah, you can see the progress. But we maybe do think that you whoever whoever completes first gets gets the main. Super yes. rewards sort or of thing, but, but everyone else gets a reward yeah, based on how close you got to that's the end. It, if you're, yeah, I agree with that. And the guy who just opened the screw scroll gets a certificate <laughs> of participation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I think the last one, I mean, we kind of come, I think I'm going to come to you two for this one, which is mining and smithing. Um, so, mining and smithing, as we know, we took a step back and we, uh, we decided it wasn't going to be for September. What is, first of all, is what's changing about it? And are we going to be doing something similar, such as dev, uh, dev blogs, et cetera, like we yeah. did before? So October is when we kickstart some video blogs, um, taking through step by step through four or five of the core issues at the heart of the design. Once we kind of have talked to over, uh, talked over our reasonings, we, we might give a kind of a, like a week to discuss it, for the players to discuss it, and then we're going to make a hard decision at the end of that week. We're just going to form a design. We know what our core aims are, that we want the mining and smithing rework um, for a player who comes back to mining and smithing or comes in new, uh, uh, who's interacted with it before for it to feel familiar, for it to still feel simple. Um, don't want it to feel overtly complex. But also, um, we don't want to, we want to bring up non-combat skilling 
to be viable as a money-making method, as a training method, in comparison to um, PVM. Um, so um, rather than bringing down combat and the rewards for combat, we really want to elevate non-combat. And I think that's where we might have got it a little bit... We got, got it wrong, maybe, okay. in the previous way. So we're certainly skewing, or we believe we want to go that way um, with mining and smithing. But there's a lot of things we liked about it. We really liked the um, designs for the materials and the tiers of weaponry and armour. Um, we really liked the notion of, well, we have to do it, from, in my opinion, of bringing, down the, bringing the mining and smithing bands in line with the defence levels. Um, so there are a, th a few things we are retaining. I think that just with, um, I forget the name of it now, there were some elements of it that was honed and masterwork. There were elements of it that were too complex, that didn't feel necessary. A lot of people who did the survey, who were watching the streams, felt like this is more than we really wanted. So we're going to look very critically, particularly at those elements. Awesome. Um, obviously, you guys announced weather as well in regards to uh, RuneScape itself. I mean... It's the curious thing we've announced in the time. <laughs> um, I mean, what examples could we see with weather coming into the game and what situations could it provide in that sense? Like, if it's snowing, this happens, etc. Um, if it's snowing and then everyone is just constantly going through the ice, sliding <laughs> puzzle to oh, get anywhere. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. RuneScape is a big sliding puzzle. <laughs> uh, funnily enough, we thought about this and it's actually designed for it. Oh really? We can do it? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I really like the idea... Oh, uh, it's got cut from the, uh, the nine images on the screen. The, um, the idea of you're wandering through the desert. Oh yes. And the, there's a sandstorm storm. Yeah. and it can't Strips see anything and then down. you have a yeah, temple that rises up out of the sands. I think that's one of the things, discovering new areas as you move along because of a particular weather condition in a particular area and knowing what, where they're coming from or being able to follow the weather. Yeah, I really like the idea, because um, I'm like this as a RuneScape player, I don't like having to wait for a weather system to turn up or, you know, like demon flash mobs, a demon flash mob to turn up and then go do it. I want to kind of have some influence on it myself. I really like the idea of rain dances and weather dances that will help you do a small localised version for a smaller benefit. It's really cool. Sandstorm! Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you're so Darude. <laughs> yeah, Lost Temple of Darude. <laughs> um, I kind of want to do tornadoes in the wilderness that just kind of like pick you up and fling you across the other oh, side of the wilderness. Nice. <laughs> I do love, um, uh, with the Menethos Trail, I think um, the volumetric lighting, I believe it's called, uh, was shown off, and that, that looked absolutely yeah, that last amazing. Shot, the last shot is all in engine. That's all that, game, that's yeah. gameplay. That, uh, that was the no Witcher point. doesn't even have that. Eat that Witcher. Yeah. Well, we should probably check that before we start. <laughs> this is why you're not allowed on... Uh... Anyway, so it looked really pretty, and... It's okay. Don't worry. All is normal. Just yeah, keep okay, in. that's fine. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that was all in engine and all shot directly. There were no other effects. And that's something that we're working on trying to release without causing everybody's machine to crash to a halt. It did, I, I, I had no idea that was actually an engine. That looks uh, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's really uh, something to keep an eye on. Um, achievements, the uh, achievement system itself. Um, I think we have an image that we can bring up on screen, but first of all, how does it work in relation to the current task system we have in game? Uh, will it work in, in with that, or is it going to be completely different? I mean, how's it all working here? So the, ta the achievement system that we're looking to build gathers up it's a big lot. umbrella. All of original. those checkbox pieces that we were trying to plan and that we already have in the game and bring them all under one. And so we already recognize your achievements within those systems. So if you've completed them, they'll be ticked off. If you've completed diaries, they'll be ticked off. Um, but then we can put a, a global level of completion on what you have done. Uh, how many achievements have you completed overall? And you can use that as a continuous score to rank yourself. And then that means that each time something new comes out, new expansion, it raises the cap on that level and you can chase after the new numbers and you can try and do new things. The parts that I think are really exciting are some of the things that we have on here, like, have you used every item in the game or have you done all of these different yeah. parts and recognizing you when you have? Yeah. Um, so one of them would say to complete all content released in autumn 2017. So in that case, it'd be Menaphos in that sense. Yeah. So are we gonna see exclusive achievements in that sense or will everything, there's no time locks in that to sense, To be honest, right? we, we could, but I don't think We've talked to Ava, I mean, Mod, Mod Wolver about um, the notion of zero achievements. So for playing a, se a seasonal event, obviously that's time locked, it's gonna be leaving the game. But there is, we're talking over how we might recognize somebody who did that, who has gained an item that, you know, 
has left the game. So the way that you know other systems do it is by giving zero achievements. There may be a better way that we can do it. I also really like the idea of feats. You know, maybe those are zero achievements. You know, we don't want everybody to try to kill Court Beast with, you know, no Naked weaponry. Basketball. Exactly, with a, with a rubber chicken, but there are people who have done it. So we'd like to recognise that formally, but not necessarily on the that total. Yeah, well, I was going to say, is there going to be, uh, is there any plans for any goofy Easter egg slash Yes, yeah, yes there thing. is. Absolutely. Yeah. We're awesome. revealing none of them. Someone in chat asking for us to have, like, secret achievements. I think we can yeah, do yeah, that yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. I think um, we should definitely have something. So, like I mean, obviously, does that tie... Uh, it might be too early to say, but does, does it tie into comp? Because right now, tasks tie into the comp requirements. Does well, achievements tie into... Well, comp is tied into achievements. Yeah. Okay. So it'll be a portion of the achievements that you have completed. At the moment, comp and trim comp are a binary. You either have everything or you don't have everything. If you're below it, no matter how far below it you are, you just don't have it. What we've got here is a way that we can say you've gotten to a certain... You, you can show your completion rate and how much you have done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's right. I think we've got reached a point where people are frustrated when they've got comp that we're adding achievements into the game, but we still want to recognise people who are making progress. So how do we, you know, handle that? Well, we'll look at the kind of the, the how they work together, comp yeah. and achievements, but it's very much in, comp inside achievements. All right, so we can go on to ACK, uh, Chapter 2. Sorry. Uh, what, are we, what are we going to? Uh, coming out in October. Um, What's so, coming out uh, in October? I think there's a new bar in the ARC as well. So oh. The ACK bar. October. <laughs> um, oh, October! That is brilliant. October. October. Coming out in October. Um, What's coming up? Come on, Shawnee, hurry up. <laughs> Stay on target. Come on. I am. Um, um, so what? It, it was kind of shown off by Mojo. Mojo took the stage, and yeah, yes. so it's his very first time on main stage, which is really awesome. Uh, took to the stage to talk about um, the yeah, upcoming. Content. He did it very well. Yeah, he uh, and in fact, your... he talks far too long, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were way over, yeah, way over that, time. That set us off for the rest of the day. That so, was, uh... a couple of weeks ago, you kind of mentioned one of the achievements coming. Uh, so, excuse me, one of the awards coming uh, with the ARC release. Yes. Um, is there anything else we can say regarding rewards and stuff? We're yeah, um, this? A, f a few people have asked the question of... Um, are the three rewards that we announced in RuneScape's rest of the year the only three rewards? And that is incorrect. They were just examples. Those are good examples. Which examples were they, sorry? They were, so we already talked about the Crystal Siphon that yep. would take um, uh, Crystal Tools and it would, uh, when you siphon them it would be the equivalent of level 90, I believe. Yeah. Uh, something akin yep. to that. Sorry, I may be off piece a little. Um, but we were also talking about a new Hunter outfit that would take you, if you had the active stick, up to plus 11% on your Hunter training, which is grand, so we turned it up to 11, obviously. So basically, it follows um, the same set as the other outfits, it goes up to 6%. Six, six yes. Okay. Yeah, and there's a, there may well be other abilities attached to that as well, I can't remember. Okay. Um, and, oh, here we go. What was oh. the other thing? I have to admit, I missed the talk. Crystal, oh, how dare you? I know. How dare you, sir? Um, Crystal Siphon, Hunter outfit, oh, and... Um, Tetsu. So um, the port's armour, we're delivering gloves and boots, that will also um, add a set effect. So that is all coming. I don't know if we revealed what that set effect is because we're still working on it. Okay. But there's, there's additional stuff. There's all sorts of bonuses as well and additional cosmetics. There'll be things to work towards. Um, I believe there um, are four new islands that players can go to. Uh, yeah, technically might be six. Uh, the te island that once were turtles, turtles is three. Yeah. But that's cheating. Um, and, uh, well, Alex, that's, that an, that's an incredible image. That's the Harbinger. That's the yeah. Harbinger, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've got, uh, well, four or six men, how you look at it, and your islands to go to. It's and not about completing it, to be honest. It's about completing the arc. Um, which... I, I do love how someone has the cake as their, <laughs> yes. uh, as, like, the stand out there. These are the castaways that you get via <laughs> messages in the bottle. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know the story about all of them. Pretty sure it's Steve the Squid. Anyway, you have to talk to the Guardians about that. They're responsible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but regardless, it's about making the... So you'll have loads of new islands. You'll have all of this stuff to explore. And we'll complete the arc, as in thematically, we'll go to every island that's in the arc. But for me, it's really about also making it worthwhile doing the arc. And those that people that felt it was a bit grindy, that there wasn't enough XP or, um, or resources gained from it, we're really making it... It was always about Uncharted Isles. And we'll be giving more more access to Uncharted Isles, bring down the supply cost, giving players more supplies, getting people to the Uncharted Isles, because that's where the fun is, for me, and also where the best rates are. Um, so we're going to get people there, and there'll be rewards at the end of it. And I love this kind this of little journal. This is pretty awesome. Yeah, so we'll get players being bird birdwatchers, um, filling out their journal. There's also berries, mushrooms, 
uh, very, uh, imp planes, various other things to find with rewards for completing full sets of those. So very much, um, I know that we were talking about, um, just like in Elf City, you have that choice between drops or XP on Implings, the same will happen with this for the Implings here. That's another example of the rewards that you could get. I suppose one question is, uh, is anything from the original set of our content being changed to go with this update? I mean, obviously the Uncharted Isles, so that thing that you've been rolling on is going to have a huge number of additional resources or, or kind of the chance, the kind of resources that can pop up. Um, new activities, new options. The islands themselves will look different, much better. Um, there's a lot changing within the arc. Okay. <sighs> It's just now the chat's reaction to just imitate any, <laughs> yeah. any way I say that word. Um, one of the things that we haven't mentioned that I would like to say is that they, going back to expansions, I know a few people were asking me if expansions were going to cost anything else in addition to your membership. It is that it is all with your membership. There is no additional cost to pay. Yeah, uh, that's something that in the excitement while on stage, both of us forgot to say it. Yeah, this was in our scripts. Yeah. We yeah, we got. That's kind of a. A big, yeah, yeah no, a that big was point. massively important. A lot of other games of skipped it. Yeah, a lot of other games will charge for expansion. We just want to make it clear that is not the case here. Awesome. Well, I mean, I, I did ask this question at the start of the stream, but I kind of jumped in the way. But I mean, I didn't get your favourite RuneFest moments because I think it's pretty cool to talk about them. Um, I've got my own personal favourite, but I mean, any. Mm, what is it? Anyway. Well, what is it? Then, Come on, Johnny. Uh, hosting the stream and then, you know, being backstage. Yeah, we can just, turn this around. You're going to turn this around? <laughs> yeah. No, just. Being backstage and being able to present. I didn't imagine nine months into joining RuneScape I'd ever be in these scenarios, let alone, you know, hosting the stream of RuneFest. So, yeah, my it personal favourite. It was hilarious coming off one side of the stage, seeing you do an interview, have to walk through kitchens and out around the building and back in to get to the other side of the stage. <laughs> one of my favourite bits was holding No Man's Ball. Um, so what happened was that <laughs> Teasecut had gone uh -huh. into the audience and left his ball behind. So I was just holding this glowing luminescent ball about aloft my head as I was trying to guide my way to Teasecut. And there was this nomad waving his staff at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, mate. You know, it's, um, that was lovely. I don't know why that sticks with me. I can't remember anything, though. What? Was it, I, was it our evil, evil Dave pose? Oh, of course, that, that's the greatest thing that's ever happened. <laughs> it was actually standing behind the stage when we were going through the reveals, the part when, when Mark, Mark was on the stage. Song, yeah. And you, you knew the parts that were popping up, so we couldn't see anything that was going on. You just hear him talk and know the parts they're showing on the screen. You're like, yep, that's what we expected in that reaction. Yep, they got that one. Oh, that's the image they're were showing right now. Were there any right reactions now. that surprised you at all? Uh, there was the level of the cheer when we announced that Fate of the Gods 2 was called Children, Children of, of Ma. Ma yeah. um, we were not ready for that. At all. The conversation kept going and Ollie was stumbling. It was, it was funny. <laughs> yeah, weird. Reaction? Did... Favourite reaction? Oh, it, Evil Dave was great. It was a great, <laughs> that was a great reaction. Yeah, that was, I wasn't expecting it. Also, bank bidders, like, um, obviously there's been the reaction on, street, uh, on various um, social media as well. But it was a little idea that I thought was kind of nice and fun. But that's turned into something that's been generating all sorts of conversation. I never quite expected the, the full-blown reaction to yeah. that. The scale of bank bidders has never been large. It's been some, a small, nice, fun event said, that we, we always, were going to try and put together. We always talked about it in the same breath as like September raffles, things like that. It was yeah. always intended to be quite small. Um, I, don't, I think when we were talking about it, we wanted to make it clear that they were banned accounts, you know, that mm. it wouldn't be your account if you've been dormant, that sort of thing. But I don't think we quite anticipated a lot of the talk about rares into the game and yeah. things like that. Kelby? Um, uh, so I was staff manager for the day, so I was running around with a radio headset, which was, which was fun. Um, but I, I mean, I just enjoyed, like, you know, um, I guess the kind of, you know, you running around and then someone calling your name and you know, someone wants to talk about something, um, giving ideas, talking about something we've done and thanking and getting pictures with and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was all really cool. Um, what was the story you told on the RuneFest stream about the Cyclops and that? I, so, yeah, I, you the, need to um, tell the story. We had a JMOD um, dressed up in, well, we had several JMODs who were rotating through the day because it, it was must have been boiling, boiling. in that suit. Um, but you might have seen the, the big ogre, uh, sorry, Cyclops cos <laughs> uh, costume that they were in and walking about. And the way it was is like the heads was here um, and they were looking through the beards, but you can't actually look forward, you can only look down. So we had like several chaperones kind of guide them around. Um, but we also have brought in someone who um, has this amazing, like, um, uh, kind of like a rock golem type outfit that has rotating eyes and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, and at some point, like, the two of them just kind of 
you met in the middle of the uh, in, in the uh, venue and uh, just kind of went at each other with their swords and had a fight, um, which was cool. Pretty awesome. Um, just double checking if you guys want to answer, ask anything else, please go ahead. But I mean, there's been lots of questions in the chat today, um, yeah. which we obviously don't have the time right now to get through all of them. I think you know, as, been, as time yeah. goes on, we'll be you know, as we actually getting towards these updates, we will be talking yeah, a lot more about them individually. I know people have lots of questions. I'm sorry we can't get through them all yeah. these days. And it's worth yeah. reiterating that there's surveys there. Um, I don't know if we can put the survey in the link in there. But the again. link, yeah. yeah but there are survey. open fields there that have you, if you've got individual concerns about any of the updates, <coughs> they're there. You can talk about them. Um, Similarly, if you're excited about any of the parts yeah, specifically, mm -hmm. then that's great. One of the big things is that as we're just kicking these kinds of things off, it's really useful to know if you if there's a part of it that you're really excited by because we can focus on that and make that a bigger. Yeah, thing. absolutely. There's um there are questions that are ten, out of ten. How excited are you for individual updates? So if you really like something, don't want it to change by any means, then just slap a ten on it. Well, a bit of luck. Um, we can go through the survey a little bit more on a future stream. I think that would be a pretty cool thing to do. Yeah, go I'd through that survey. Both surveys. Oh, both surveys. Yeah, even, exactly. Yeah. I'd really like to do that. Oh, and see stream. what comes out of it. Yeah, Dave uh, data stream. A, a you don't want to mix those two. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> for the for the stuff that kind of Ninja probably um, going to be involved with the the bank rework, we will have a kind of design document that we want to put up on the forms in the near future. Um, so once we've properly finalised that, um, it's been a bit of a time but we just unfortunately just been so involved with RuneFest like myself and these guys um, just haven't had the chance to really check it until well we're still <laughs> catching up yeah um, uh, but that'll be there um, for people to see and you know, we'll get feedback um, before the guys really delve into it um, and then you know Clue Scrolls is quite a bit off at this time so we're not really looking yeah. at that right now um, but yeah
So I think, um, obviously, we've been a bit quiet on what's coming up for our next update for next week, but um, we do have a stream on Thursday where we'll be going through that, and that is Tales of Nomad and Hadman of Nomads that will be going in uh, for the end of September, uh, which is next Monday. There's uh, some other so stuff going in as well, I believe, is the opening uh, wallet. Oh, there's also the currency pouch. Thank you, Kelpie. <laughs> it's a big one. Yeah, the currency pouch will be going in as well, so uh, definitely keep an eye out for that one. Um, we'll go, be going through that one and, on... Uh, <clears throat> something else that's kind of maybe a little bit bigger than all those things, uh, oh. from my point of view. <laughs> uh, Deathmatch. What was yours? Deathmatch yeah, death is going out. Yeah, yeah. Um, a kind of arcade mode PvP. So we have, really we, have, a, we yeah. have PvP, we have a weekly D&D going in with so uh, Nomad Town Mills. Currency pouch. Yeah, there's a fair bit to look forward to. Uh, so uh, we'll go through all that on Thursday um, because normally I stream it on Friday, but I'm not going to be here, so we're going to move it to Thursday. But unless you guys have anything to say, is anything you want to say before we finish up here? Yeah, I think that's it. There's a yeah, lot of Yeah, keep chatting yeah, to us on um, our Twitter at JXOsborn, at JXConnor, at Jux, uh, Kelpie, if you want to find out more. Oh, I see how it is. Well, I mean, what can you offer? Oh, stop bullying Sean here. <laughs> oh. It would just be Gobi memes, you know. And on that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think we've got a stream coming. We're going to pass over to player support. We'll be uh, jumping on the stream in a few minutes. So please don't go anywhere. And on that very depressing note, thanks very much for all our support. <laughs> I don't mean it. Have don't yourself worry, Sean, the most wonderful. glorious night. And uh, we'll throw over to player support in just a little bit. Don't go anywhere, guys. Fantastic. Well, I've been to them all, but I think okay. this one, this one was really good. Cool. You, you were doing the night before, yeah? That's right. Yeah. So, so we kind of headed up the night before event, uh, which is the well, as you probably guessed from the name, the the event before Runefest. Um, anyway, so it's a really big part of uh, Runefest, the Runefest weekend. You know, this year players paid for it. You know, it's a real event. 
Uh, we rent out the whole of Namco Funscape, you know, got all the arcade, arcade machines unlocked. Um, you get like, a drink voucher. Um, and it's a great opportunity to kind of meet your clan members, your mates, um, meet JMods there. We had about 15, 20 members of staff volunteering there in terms of pre-registering people so they can get to the VIP queue the next day. Uh, you could buy some merch there so you get kind of the t-shirt and the hat um, so you could wear that in the queue uh, when you were going to RuneFest. Um, and yeah, it's just a really good event. We had about 800 players there. Uh, it was really busy, but that's, that's good. It's, it's packed like that. Um, feedback is players really liked it. So yeah, it's a, it's a huge success from our end. Um, and Steve, you obviously, well, we're both working RuneFest, but you're looking at the merch store. Yeah, I was looking after the, the merchandise mm -hmm. uh, at RuneFest. And, you know, it, it costs Jagex money to put on RuneFest every year. You know, we lose money on it, but actually, you know, the money that we take in the merch store, it just helps offset a bit of that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cover it all, but we really appreciate the support that everyone gave us at RuneFest. And, you know, right from the people that bought one pen through to the guy who walked in and said, I'll have one of everything. But, you know, it, <laughs> right. was, it was fantastic merch. And, yeah. um, you know, it was our most successful sort of merch ever, which, which was great. Mm -hmm. I think it looked quite professional this year if anyone went and they've been to previous years. You know, we made quite an effort this year to make it look a bit more professional. Yeah. So it was dressed very well with kind of displays and it was in the Eastern Lands theme. Yeah, it was incredible. The proper tills there. We could give people receipts. And it wasn't really, it was, in previous years, it's looked a bit sort of like a, a sort of someone just sort of with a lemonade stall outside their house, you know, yeah, whereas yeah, this, yeah. this time yeah, we kind so. of tried to do it a lot more professionally and we've had feedback that, that people felt that was the case. Mm -hmm. We had some sort of good value stuff. We sold some old stuff yeah. a bit cheaper so people could kind of get their hands on that and we had a good mixture of, of RuneScape and old school merch mm -hmm. so people could kind of get that. So, you know, the positive, we ran out of a few things and that just shows sort of how popular it was, but uh, yeah, absolutely. yeah, it was fantastic. Um, and actually, so what I've done is... Uh, yeah, talk to us about this bag. Yeah, well, I, well, I grabbed this bag. So this, this is the... The, the RuneFest bag, so obviously guys that went to RuneFest will, will recognise this, but what I did, I knew we were doing this stream today, so I right. grabbed this bag uh, and I put a few things in it and we're actually going to give it away to someone watching the stream. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. So let's have a look at what's in the magic yeah, bag. let's do it. Uh, so obviously you get the bag itself, uh, the canvas uh, RuneFest bag, uh, blue party hat. Worth a load. Max cash plus shards, just for starters. Uh, so this is the slouch beanie, uh, the RuneFest beanie. That's quite a cool thing. We're throwing that in. Uh, we've got the official RuneFest mug with the RuneFest logo. So we're going to do that as well. RuneFest mouse mat. Loads of that. Keeps coming, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is really cool, actually. This is a RuneScape coffee mug, ceramic coffee mug with rubber seal lid. So that's cool. Uh, they were really popular actually at the event. There's a CD, RuneScapey music, they are an nice. eye patch that we gave people because we had like a ship there and things like that. Everyone was wearing those at RuneFest. There's a coffee cup coaster, a uh, badge set here of RuneScape skills. I can see a Slayer badge in there, that's quite cool. Uh, what else we got? Oh, a little Monty duck. Nice. So we gave these little ducks away to people at RuneFest so you can put them in strange places and take photographs of them and tweet them out. But yeah, that's, you can have one of those as well. Uh, Sharpie, RuneScape Sharpie, RuneScape Biro Pen, and another badge set. What's this one? This is uh, the Gods, the gods God yeah. badge set. And really nice, uh, won't show up on the camera, but it's a really nice pin, uh, RuneFest yeah, official nice, pin. Man. So yeah. we're going to chuck all of that in this bag. Uh, and give it away to someone watching the stream. So how That's we... right, yeah. So I guess if hopefully you're thinking, how can I wear in all this cool swag? There's loads of stuff going on there. And the RuneFest bag itself is really big. It's, it's really nice. Um, and so, as I mentioned at the start, uh, during this stream, we're going to be talking about Customer Support Week. Uh, and the way you can kind of win this bag is really, really simple. There's just a few steps. Nice. Uh, wise old man, yeah? Yeah, there you go. good. Uh, there's a few ways you can win it. So, um, oh, sorry, there's an easy way to win it. All you have to do, is follow either or both myself and Steve on Twitter. So it's JagxSteveW and JagxInfinity. And all you gotta do is tweet us the date that Customer Support Week starts. Now, if you don't know the date, don't worry. In just a moment, we're gonna be talking about Customer Support Week and we'll release the date then. Obviously, if you already know the date, then brilliant, thumbs up from us. Follow us on Twitter, tweet us that date when it starts and you'll be automatically entered in to win this bag and all the goodies in it. And the competition uh, lasts until midnight tonight. Uh, the winner will be selected tomorrow. Um, so really easy to win. Um, and the reason we kind of want you to kind of uh, be on Twitter and engage is, you know, Steve and I are going to be tweeting out um, throughout Customer Support Week and, and before all the things which are going on. So whilst we're going to do this live stream and talk about all the crazy things and, and cool things going on then, um, yeah, we're going to be tweeting out loads. Um, so you guys know exactly what things are happening and when. 
Um, so that's kind of why I want you to follow us. But also, it's quite nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, you're going to win that kind of stuff. Yeah. You can, all, you know, you could unfollow us after. You know, that's also a thing. But well done. Um, no, no, <laughs> that's not, not. There's a few people in the chat saying international shipping and stuff like that. Look, we'll send this to whoever the winner is. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you're in Australia, we'll get this to you. We're not worried about that. Jackets will pick up the cost of that. So don't worry about that. If you're the winner, you're the winner. Completely free. You're going to win this. We're not going to charge you any shipping. We'll get this out to you. So don't worry about that. Cool. Yeah. So just the date. Customer support week starts. If you don't know. Keep tuned in, stay tuned in, because we're going to talk about it right now. Well, so, let's do that. You've been talking about customer service week. So, I yep. suppose we're in the industry, yeah, so we know about this. It's really marked on our calendar with, with a big it. red cross, and we know about it. But people watching might not be aware of customer service week, so, so tell us all about it. Yeah, so I think, you know, if you think about all the words customer service week, you probably think it's a bit boring, a bit old-fashioned, a bit stuffy. And, and, and you're kind of right, like, actually it is, but we wanted to do something cool with it. Put like an exciting twist on it and, and kind of we, we've taken it for the last few years actually this is our third year doing it and each year we've kind of tried to make it quite fun uh, engaging you know involve you guys at home and trying to make customer support week a little bit more exciting and interesting and throw away uh, or throw in some goodies and prizes as well um, so um, you know we've done that for the last two years um, each year's got bigger and better so last year we had the drop which is a customer service theme drop uh, and we did loads of things as well, like Q&As and streams and, you know, forum, ask me anything and that kind of stuff. Um, and this year, you know, except we want to do bigger and better. Um, and, and that's what we're kind of doing. Um, so, so, so what things are we going to have this year then? So Yeah, so I think, importantly, Customer Support Week starts on the 3rd of October. When does it start? Monday, the 3rd of October. Got it. So there you go. If you're looking for that competition... Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about yeah, that. Of course. Um, so Monday the 3rd of October, and it lasts until uh, Sunday the 9th of October. Um, and there's everything we did last year. So you've got the Q&As um, on Reddit, uh, Q&As on our forums. You've got Day in the Life streams on Twitter. That kind of gives a really nice insight and a behind the scenes look at the work we do. We do. Not just Steve and I, but we've got the kind of head of our department. So it's Mod Kelvin. You'll have specialists, people in our ICU team. So they, they deal with cheaters and, and bots and, and real trading, that kind of stuff. Um, people who deal with kind of bug reports. So lots of cool um, kind of live Twitter streams about going on there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, but actually, this year is a little bit different. Um, so uh, along with all of that cool stuff, we've got some in-game content going on as well. Steve, can you... Talk to us about that. Yeah, so this year, I'm quite excited about this. So yeah. this year, there's a new NPC going into game, brand new NPC you haven't seen before, who's going to be sitting in Berthorpe. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy, he's the kind of centre of, of Customer Service Week. And he's going to be there forever, but you'll first see him in Customer Service Week. Uh, and he looks a bit like a vampire. He looks pretty cool, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's called Count Check. And he can check your account. Clever. So Makes sense. See what we did there? Yeah. Uh, so count check, he'll be in Berthorpe, um, and he's actually quite smart. What you can do, you can talk to this guy, you can get the dialogue, you can get the backstory of how he's actually ended up in Berthorpe and what he's doing there. Um, but also what you can do is he can check the security of your account. So when you talk to him, he can have a look at your account and check how secure it is. Yep. And then he can let you know how secure your account is. And if there's a couple of gaps and maybe things you can improve, he can give you kind of some tips and links cool. on how to go and set this kind of stuff up. He can also count for you because he's a count, right? So uh, right. I won't tell you exactly what he, what he does when he counts for you, but there'll be an option on him where you can ask the count to count for you and you can see something uh, cool. The chat's getting it, by the way, and a count check. They get it, and a yeah. count yeah, check. It worked, well done, yeah. He's got a fantastic examine option that was written by a pure genius that works here. Right. It was me. Um, but um, I'll, I'll leave, I'll, I'll wait until you examine him in the game and see what that is, but that's cool as well. Um, but also for customer, so he's going to be there forever, but for customer service week and that week only, the week that begins the 3rd of October, yeah. he does some extra things as well, as well as the dialogue and checking your account. So perhaps you could run us through that. Yeah, no worries. I think, uh, so when you um, talk to him during customer support week... And